Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I am ultra excited to be here today. It's a Friday. It's St. Patrick's Day. This will come out on a Wednesday. So go ahead and have a green beer if you need to on a Wednesday when this comes out. But today is an awesome um, opportunity. I get to have a connect of a connect, which if you listen to Turmeric and Tequila, you know these are my favorite conversations. And bonus, it's Fit Family. So this Varsity Human heard one of our other podcasts and happened to know Aaron and Lions Pride Fitness and all the great things they're doing. And she was connected to them through another um, fitness family of Colfax Strong. So it's this whole string of events. So I am so excited to welcome Sarah R. Vogler to the TNT mic. I'm going to read her bio and then we are going to jump in because she has an incredible story. So be ready to be inspired. Sarah is a strong and energetic program operation professional that with a demonstrated history of over 10 years working in all spheres of government. Vogler has a bachelor's degree in international relations, political science from Cal California State University of Sacramento, as well as graduating from College of the Canyons with an associate's uh, of art, associate's art degree. In her personal time, Vogler is an artist, a poet, a Reiki master, and an avid CrossFit athlete. Where Vogler competed in the first ever women's upper extremity division for the 2021 CrossFit Open, ranking 35th. Sarah, welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Yes. So this is really exciting. Um, do you know Kevin Ogar? Yeah, I do. Okay. So we, I've known him, we started CrossFit in 2009 and Crunt Range CrossFit where I trained and CrossFit Unbroken where he trained. We were like one of like the up and coming, you know, crews in, in Colorado. So we've known him forever and what he's done for the adaptive community at a, a spine injury years ago. And he's just been like the godfather, I feel like of adaptive fitness and CrossFit. It's been just magic. So I'm excited to have this conversation today and I'm super excited. Not only a CrossFitter, we're leaning into all things creativity on, on two and tequila so this couldn't be more on time but um before we get into the here and now tell us about young sarah and kind of like how you even got to america and the whole story uh, all right um so uh we came uh we came to america because i needed uh, surgeries um and i couldn't get that in uh, poland so we came as a family um in the 90s where um i received surgeries um 17 surgeries to be exact. Um, and I wow. became a patient of Shriners Hospital. And I'm proud to be a Shriners kid. Um, they've done amazing work for myself and also for just like the countless children that they've helped to become in independent like myself. Um, so I became a patient um, in Shriners Hospital uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and they took care of me. They really gave me kind of the, you know, just that kindness and the thoughtfulness um, of the care that they did. I mean, at the time it was like very, um, there was a lot happening in the sense of like surgeries and also, um, you know, school and, and trying to be cool and fitting in. Um, so all of those things just matching with, um, with the surgeries, very complicated surgeries to lengthen bones and to just, just to help me achieve success and, and become, you know, the best person that I could be. That's incredible. So your family, you were in Poland and you were a young baby. Like, is this like two, three years old or even before then? Yeah, it's um just like a a a baby and um and so um we came to America for for the first time and then we went back and then they decided that I needed more surgeries. So that's okay. when um you know my family made the tough decision at the time to to move, you know. So we wow. made um so we moved all the way to Los Angeles. That and, is, um, that's a commitment yeah. right there. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean um, they, my parents just, you know, um, did so much for me and my sister to, for us to have like the best life, um, in America. And, 
um, for us to become just our, the best versions of ourselves. Really, it's incredible. Well, you had you had no choice because obviously you were coming from really good, committed, resilient humans. So you had no choice but to be of greatness. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the syndrome because you were born without both radius bones in both arms. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, and now you're an artist, an athlete, and all these things. Like, it's pretty remarkable, which we'll jump in. So once you started to um, get in, you know, surgeries, we've had it, we've started to grow up. Um, we're getting into middle school and high school, which I think is really almost terrible for everybody because it's just awkward phases. And, you know, you're never good enough. And you never, I mean, even if you look a certain way or can do certain things, I think we all have these insecurities. But when did you really start to notice that you felt different and when did you then start to own kind of like what you consider now your superpowers? Um, you know, um, I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, I know that, you know, um, when just growing up and having the experiences of, um, I went to a private Jewish day school, um, growing up. So having that experience um, was also different because it wasn't, um, you know, my parents wanted me to have um, an education of both religious studies and also secular studies. And so um, having that experience uh, and the school itself was just remarkable because there was art, there was um, education, there was dancing, uh, th there was karate. So we're, there was all of these things to give um, me just a full rounded experience of also Juda Judaic studies as well. Uh, so that just gave me so much uh, creativity and freedom to be uh, just a, a kid just hanging out and, and doing weird stuff <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Uh, but I'm now I'm really grateful to have that experience because I can look back at it and just it was like a nice bubble because it was from kindergarten to sixth grade. And it was just a nice bu bubble to be with the same kids from from the entire time of school. Yeah. Uh, it was a great it was a great time. That's incredible. I mean, that's so magical that you actually got to, because now, nowadays, I mean, we're, we're years later out of elementary school, but they're really getting rid of a lot of creative programs, arts and PE and all this stuff that kids critically need. And that more studies are coming out proving that, but that's really serendipitous and lucky that you not only found a school that was fitting, that you liked, you loved, but they really fostered all the arts and like extracurriculars that allowed you that space to be yourself. Were you always kind of a creative as a kid? I think so. Uh, I think I always, because my, you know, my father's a teacher and he's also an artist and he's a filmmaker and my mother's also, um, I would consider her an artist in her own way. She's a scientist. So I think those two just match so well together and to give me the creativity and to give my sister creativity as well in her own way. You know, For we sure. found it um, in our own way, but also just kind of sheltering that and also keeping it just really wet in, in our own way to find uh, our own way to experience life. That's amazing. So what drew you kind of coming from that? What drew you into like government studies and political science? What was the passion piece there? Uh, so I always wanted to work in government and I got the opportunity uh, to uh, to do that in College of the Canyons to be um, student government president. Um, so I served one term as that as that student government president and also just to work through uh, just different ways of interacting with students and ag ab advocating for student rights and dis um, students with disabilities. So I've always had that, um, but I really have to draw credit to, um, I attended a summit um, for youth, youth with disabilities, the, the Youth Leadership Forum for Students with Disabilities. And that really gave me that kind of that spearheading and point out to really be a leader. And so from there, um, as I said, you know, I went to COC, the College of the Canyons, and then Sacramento's uh, University, um, where I just achieved um, so much there because I worked on different programs um, dedicated to um, making things accessible. Um, so at the Multicultural Center, um, I did a, a lot of work there uh, to make sure that that center itself was accessible, but also like the programming. So like, what does it mean to be a student um, here at Sac State? And what does it mean to be a student um, that has disabilities or just has different ways of entering spaces? So a lot of those, a lot of that programming that I really wanted to to um, include and make people aware that 
there's just different ways of um, experiencing school and education. That's incredible. Did you always feel this? Are you the oldest child? Yes. Okay. So did you, I'm the oldest of four as well. So I think the oldest, it kind of, I think you're just thrust into a leadership role, no matter what, like it's just there. Cause you got siblings coming and whatever. So I think it's just within the firstborn. but did you always feel like yourself as a leader? And then in turn, um, you know, kind of responsible to forge this path where we, we still need to forge a lot more path around disabilities in general. Yes, I, I think so. Um, I think, again, you know, giving credit a lot to um, my first experience of um, the Youth Leadership Forum for Students with Disabilities, like that gave me a lot of education around disability history, disability culture, and um, to take those tools that I learned there um, and to really take it into, you know, Sac State and also College of the Canyons. Um, and just advocating for for different kinds of people, but also just people in general, um, for people to find their own way um, through creativity, through art, um, and even now through fitness. Uh, I think all of these experiences just really match to um, living living a good life. Absolutely. Did you, I, one of my, I'm a big documentary nerd. I love all documentaries. And one of my favorites, I believe it was called Crip Camp. And um, I don't know if you had seen this, but but Judy, uh, hu- is it Humerman? Human? Did Human. You, we ju- yeah, we just lost her, and she was like a major advocate um, for the Disability Act and forging. Did you did you happen to see that documentary? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's what a did- great it's a great story. It's amazing. I, w- I mean, I wish it would have come out, you know, 15, 20 years yeah. ago, but it was yeah. amazing. And I'm, I, it's, it's my, it's my own bad. Cause I wasn't great. I was an athlete in school and college. It was kind of my ticket to the next level. So that was always my focus. So I wasn't, I was a good student. We got, you know, grades done, but I didn't really pay attention to a lot of history. So now as an adult, we're, you know, going back down that path, but I kind of got to see what she was doing and I didn't realize how much was going on and how much um, fighting had to happen for just basic rights, which is kind of the story of America. We've got to, you know, uh, do some trial and error. We still have a long way to go, but it's pretty amazing what, um, humans were doing that. I really encourage everyone to go watch it. I mean, they, they did like a stakeout where they stayed in the building until people listened for, was it like weeks on end? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was incredible. So, um, there's so much going on. Did you have access to like any of those happenings or, um, uh, that history, uh, in school, or did you start to learn about that once you were intentional about being in government and looking out for others? Right. So I, um, again, like, uh, I found out about disability history and culture through the youth leadership forum okay. for students with disabilities. And that's really where I got introduced to Judy human and just like the work that she's done for that, you know, for our movement and, um, just for people everywhere and for, um, the Jewish community as well. Um, and I was lucky enough, um, to, to attend the same show that she did. And so, wow. um, and, and so her, her way of, you know, showcasing her love for disability as well was through, um, you know, the Jewish faith. And so I, I really applaud her for all the work that she did. And, um, it's, it is, it is a real, real big loss. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, I just couldn't believe the resilience that the community had and how beautiful it was that everybody teamed together and were fighting for the same cause. I mean, in this day and age, you just don't get to see a lot of people, whatever it may be united over one front and, you know, working to better something for the greater good. So the whole story is incredible, but I really did like you, I I was really blown away with their strength and endurance early on because they really didn't have a ton of support, um, outside, you know, of their own community. And it was really cool to see some of the major change and, and waves of change um that they established and that she will continue to do even after she's gone so it's pretty magical um I do love also in addition to the craze that you are so passionate about fitness and this did come from your sister your family I want to know just because I you know I love CrossFit and we're here for it. we've done it forever you you don't forget your first day I want to know how you got talked into trying and then I want to hear about that first day Again, that credit has to go to my family, and it's really my sister and my brother-in-law who uh, really, um, you know, encouraged me and convinced me that I would just be a great partner in CrossFit. And uh, and you know the the way that they they told me that there was ways for me to contribute and to be a part of that community, and that there was there wasn't anything that I couldn't do there. And so um, just having that backing and that support of them is really just such a lovely thing. And also like throughout, you know, throughout my career in CrossFit, they're always cheering me on. 
and um and now my whole family does it so we're all involved in yes. it and it's such a it is really a family sport and it's um just a way of us connecting together and really being a part of that larger community Oh, I, I echo all those statements. And um, while you credit them, I give you a massive gold star because the hardest thing in CrossFit is to walk through the door day one. It's the most intimidating place. You're doing crazy things. Even if you grew up an athlete, I was a D1 athlete. They were doing stuff I had never seen before. They're doing pull-ups. We didn't do pull-ups. Like I didn't, you know, I was the kid like in middle school that couldn't do any pull-ups. And, you know, that was <laughs> traumatizing. Had to climb a rope, couldn't climb the rope. So it, it's it's a really tough space to walk into. Um, but like you said, the community community and everything that comes after walking through the door is beyond worth it. What, uh, what was your first workout? What was the, again, like, tell me about the first day. Cause the first day is brutal. <laughs> the first day. Uh, yes, it was brutal. And <laughs> I, um, I walked into uh, CrossFit, uh, foggy bottom here in Washington, DC. And I, uh, I actually just walked up to the coach and I told them that I had certain limitations and I couldn't do all the things. And, but I want to, I want to be here and I want to work out. And if you can just show me how to do it, um, or show me different ways of doing different things, then, then I, you know, I want to be here and I want to be included. And so it just kind of, you know, ran from there. And, um, and I, I don't remember kind of how everything turned out <laughs> just because, you know, there was like a lot of, a lot of things happening. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember the first workout, but I definitely know it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. But I just kept coming back and, you know, and they, as they say, you know, we'll see you tomorrow. And, and I did, you know, see them tomorrow because, you know, that's kind of, I think the mantra of, of CrossFit is they, you know, they beat the crap out of you, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're kind of all getting beat up together. And what I love is it's such an equalizer. It doesn't matter how you walk in with your whatever abilities, whatever amount of money, whatever job, whatever background, whatever anything. Once you get on the floor, it's all we're all doing the same workout. We're all in the same. We're all doing this work together. And however you do it, or however fast or quick or slow or whatever, it doesn't matter. We're still kind of in this bonding experience together. So you immediately have something in common. It's a really magical thing. Did you so did you like it day one? Because some people walk in they're like, oh, heck no, this isn't for me. Like, it's not the vibe. And then other people get beat up, but they're like, I love this. Did you love it right away? I did. I did love it right away. And, um, and my sister and um, my brother-in-law are always like impressed that I kept coming back. And, and, uh, and so I tell them, you know, that when I, when we talk about that story, it's like, I'm so glad that you start, you know, you went back and you continued yeah. and, you know, um, now, now, um, you know, I did get my level one CrossFit coach certification and that just, you know, that just up the level of, of just commitment and also dedication and, and also giving the people, um, giving people the thing that I got, you know, as far as education and also just fitness and, um, having fun, I think yeah. is important throughout all that. Absolutely. People sleep on how important the fun aspect is because it can get really intense. And even if you're not competing, like at a high level, like you, you still get competitive every day, even if it's just yourself. So it's hard to like, make sure you're still enjoying it, not get too wrapped up into the score, the macros of whatever you're doing and just kind of like enjoy that process. I do want to talk about the coaching because this had to be a nice um, you know, I wouldn't say an easy path, but like a nice path for you. Cause you'd already done leadership things. So this was like another passion piece that you got to be a leader again. Was that kind of nice transition having all those leadership, leadership skills in real life now come into fitness? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think it's just, it's just, you know, a part of who I am, just my nature and just, you know, um, really having people, um, like look at you and also, um, wait for direction and like see see that you're committed and and, make, and that just makes them committed to mm -hmm. their their own goals and their own livelihood um so i think it was just a natural fit for me uh to be a coach and to uh, uh just have fun fun showing people like how they can be better too um like provide scaling options or uh you know just show them how to do different things um and so like having that opportunity uh, just really, uh, it, it, it's always been changing my life. Um, so that's, that's really, we have to like credit cross, CrossFit to. And I say that all the time that CrossFit really changed my life and it really put just like a new trajectory on, you know, how to live, live my life to the best, um, to best way. 
Absolutely. Well, it provides another set of tests to kind of, and like another set of challenges to go after and master. And I think it's really important that we keep those in our life, especially as we get older, because you can get complacent. You can kind of find your job, you can find your daily routine and you can kind of get really comfortable. And CrossFit is literally about being uncomfortable as much as possible. Do you think that's helped um, not only our physical health, but your mental health as well? Uh, definitely. Absolutely. I Me think, too. I think the days that I don't go to the gym, I just feel crummy or mm -hmm. I have to like, I have to do some sort of movement and, uh, or going outside and, you know, jogging or, um, you know, doing squats. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, you have, I think as people, we need movement, whatever yeah. it is, uh, cause it, you know, it boosts your mood. It makes you happy. And, uh, it just gives you, gives you another another chance to, um, just to move the body. And so, so yes, I, I do it. I do think that mental health is important and the physical health as well through CrossFit, especially for me, I, you know, and again, I can only speak for myself, but I think for anyone who's experienced CrossFit can tell you the same thing, even Absolutely. though on days that you do feel crummy, you still go, um, or maybe you don't, but you know, you, you find another way, <laughs> but you yeah. find another way. You find another way. You find something different. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, it's been exponential for um, any sort of mental health in my world, especially the busy, hard days. And the days I think I don't want to go the most are the days I should go. And my mantra is kind of like, when in doubt, go work it out. So like, go move, go do something, like stop the thinking and just go move your body. So then your brain moves and we can like flush out all the drama and everything else later. Um, but I do think that blood flow and just getting around like your humans that you love and like just the energy can switch. You just got to get your foot in the door and the rest will take care of itself. So we're doing CrossFit. At what point were you like, which of course you're already a mission driven human. You're used to doing hard things. Just being part of the pack is not going to be enough. You know, you want to go to the next level. When did it flick on for you that you're like, I think I want to compete. Cause that's a whole different mindset. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Again, <laughs> I do know that it was just something that I wanted to try and, especially the opportunity where the women's uh, upper extremity uh, selection was chosen. I thought that I could try that and see, see if it could be something that I could do. And when I did, it was really fun. It was challenging. It was hard because of just the different aspects of the workouts for, I think when you do the open, you know, there's certain things that you have to hit in order for, for you to move to the next level Right. So I had to also take, um, I, uh, I had to take all of that into account. Um, so just doing that the first time and having, having all of, you know, the scaling options and, you know, the weight adjustments, but for the first open, I was able to do jumping pull-ups for the first time. And I think that's for me, just like amazing. Yeah. And to have that just be a credit to that. And I think from there, I really wanted to like tell people even more about, uh, you know, CrossFit and what a, what a difference it's made in my life and how it's changed, you know, the lives of people that are close to me for the better. Absolutely. And I think once you feel possibility in something, like if you feel it in the gym, I think that possibility opens you up to other things outside the gym and everything else. Did you see a shift in like your art or any of your creativity at the, as, um, as you got more into fitness and you felt more of this possibility? Yeah, a little bit. I think, I think I got like a chance to explore art in a different way. And I got like this, this new boost to see art, um, to see the art potential in a different way. So I think my art shifted. I and maybe it was because of CrossFit. Maybe I just uh, I just had different ways of seeing the art. Um, like when I would create a piece, I and I thought I finished it. It wasn't really finished, and there was more to do. Uh, and so I kept exploring that. Um, and I love abstract art, so that's what I do. And for me, a piece, you know, sometimes my dad always says is like, go further, go further in the art. And, and I do that. And, and so it really makes a difference. I think it makes a difference to do to explore more in the art. And so I've taken that, uh, that, that idea and that message really into the art, but also like, I think 
into my life of just like sure. dig more, explore more, um, discover more because there is more to work through. I love it. Good job, dad. Dad gets a gold star on that one. Um, but yeah, I love solid life metaphors for sure. It's kind of like you think you're done <laughs> really right. you're just, you're just getting started. So lock and load, get back into it. Chalk up. Um, you know, so tell me, I, um, I watched your short film, which we'll talk about very awesome. And I had the opportunity to watch, um, the adaptive athletes compete at, uh, the OC throwdown. Oh my gosh. I think, uh, or excuse me, not OC throwdown. Um, Wadapalooza. This is how old school CrossFit I am. Uh, Wadapalooza, I think four or five years ago, I got to see Ogar, but it was abs hands down the most inspirational fitness sports, anything. I've had three younger brothers, athletic parents seen thousands of hours and events of athletic, everything. This was hands down the most inspirational thing I've ever seen. And it was incredible. And just the mental toughness, the physical abilities, but just the energy was so incredible of just so no excuse you show up and you give what you got and uh, correct me if I'm wrong but that's the goal for you is it is it to get to Wadapalooza yes that is one of my goals and uh I keep saying that and it will happen yes it will okay happen. Did you do, we actually did, um, I've been out it for a while, but I had a team, we tried it the, this past year and we got whooped. We weren't even close. Um, I'm pretty retired though, but we tried. Did you try and um, qualify this past year? No, I did try, uh, the first year that I did the open, I tried, uh, the, that year to do it. Um, and I, and I just, I didn't make it, but that's okay because yeah. I have the experience of, of doing the workouts, which again, really tough, really challenging. Um, and I've, and I've got like little videos of me doing it. And so seeing now looking back on, you know, where I could have done improvements, how to get fit, uh, fitter and also quicker, um, you know, the different ways of doing burpees. Cause I think that was one of the workouts and then, um, dumbbell snatches. So thing, things like, again, things that I've never, you know, never done before. And now, now I can, you know, I can do it in a way that's, you know, easier for me or, you know, finding a different way of do doing the workout and also just seeing how other people are moving too. Cause now I'm just watching people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you so, have to stay a student of the game because it is, right. it's a game of efficiencies and every single time you, it takes years to be good at these things. Any level that you're coming at, even the masters as in like the, the like the professionals, not even the masters age <laughs> what I'm in, like even the, like the high level athletes that have been doing it for a long time, you're still a student and you're still improving and you still have to stay a student because there's so many like you there's new workouts there's new things that come out there's new ways of doing things there's new um regulations like stuff changes so you can never really get complacent in it do you feel like once you became a coach you actually became a better athlete mm, maybe maybe uh I think because I'm watching people now more yeah. um you know I I like people watching anyway <laughs> so now I <laughs> have an excuse now to do it even more judge everyone and, <laughs> and so I'm looking at like hip extensions and you know I'm looking at uh, you know how they're doing the squats and uh, so like really looking at how their movement is and if it's um, you know correct and if they're you know getting low low to the ground as they should um, so I think maybe in parts it's made me a better athlete um, and maybe you know I'm I'm working to be a, a good coach and a and and, and the great coach, a great coach that I can be. Absolutely. I think well, I coached across forever. And then um, I went out East to play in college and I was way far behind being like a Midwest kid. Cause the level just wasn't good out here as it was out there. So I spent hours watching game tape to just level up. Cause I'm a visual lunar learner and it, it really helped. So I swear when I became like a lacrosse coach and then I, I did get my level one back in the day and um, uh, was coaching. Then I, it just made me understand the fundamentals more and kind of like you were saying, it made me hold myself more accountable because I knew I was irresponsible for other athletes and I was like the designated leader. So you just kind of level up your game. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, and I think in parts, you know, when you watch coaches, uh, be, be attentive and, you know, invested in other athletes, uh, progressions and also successes. I think that in part, you both become better at the game and you become better at doing the workouts and also learning from each other. I think yeah. that's something that I'm learning through and just seeing that the athletes can teach you something, but you can also teach the athletes as well. 
Absolutely. Again, a good little metaphor for life. We all need to be learning from each other all the time because the reality is like we all have such different perspectives, different abilities, not even physical, but just in life or different privileges. I mean, there's all these things and we can learn so much from one another because we don't walk in each other's shoes. And if we can learn, you know, without doing that, that's I mean, then we can just, you know, appeal to so many more people and reach so many more people. Do you do you have a preference? Do you like me a coach more than an athlete or vice versa? I don't think I don't think I have enough experience in being coach in a coach to say which one I enjoy, but uh, I think I think I will enjoy being a coach, but also I I will enjoy being the learner as well and the student. And I think that's you know I think as we've said before you know just being uh, the studier and and you know always looking for better ways to uh, grow in your field and and to be better whether it's you know, in art or music or whatnot is to always um, find different ways to educate yourself and, you know, never, never settle for not knowing always, you know, always, always find different ways to learn. I love it. So on that note, let's talk about, cause we're going to talk about the film, but I want to talk about the Reiki and the energy. I am very big into energy, spirituality. I say God, universe, Madonna, whatever you believe. I'm a big Madonna fan. So I I'm, I'm here for all the energy and I think it plays extraordinarily well into fitness and CrossFit and competing, um, mental health, but tell me how you got into Reiki and like how that's important in your world now. Mm. Uh, so I started, um, I, I believe in intuition and I believe in energy. Like, I think all of that, all of, all of that has led me to where I am today. And I, um, you know, I believe in spirit guides and, you know, I believe that my ancestors are always looking out for me and yeah. those that have passed are always on, on my side. Uh, so Re I feel like Reiki was just a natural, another natural fit for me. And so I took a class through the, um, for wellness and here actually in, in George, uh, Washington, DC as well. Uh, so I took this class online and, um, and it was just really interesting to learn about in you know, different ways of activating your center and activating different portals of your body. Um, and then also realizing that I have intuition. Um, and I feel like, you know, when you have intuition in the yeah. sense of like knowing when things are good or when things are bad. And like, if there's like people behind you, that's like a way of um, having intuition. So um, going through all of all of those classes and courses uh, and like meeting other people that are interested in like-minded energy and also believing in energy. Um, because I also do acupuncture, like I do acupuncture for my own healing. Okay, um, on yourself? No, no, I go to someone. Oh, good. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> I know some people that do, but yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's cool, but I, <laughs> I go to someone uh, to do that. But um, I guess what I'm saying is like, because of, because acupuncture is a little bit different than Reiki, because Reiki, you're using energy um, of your hands and you're just allowing for the energy to move to the places that need to be moved. Um, so practice practicing that on people and helping them um, be healed in a way um, is really interesting because you also take on the energy of the other person. Right. Uh, so you have to kind of wa watch yourself in that sense. Uh, there's a way of washing it away, wa letting the energy not like be stuck on you. Um, whether it's um, like a, a bad vibes or good vibes, you know, you don't want to take on another person's energy. Well, tell us about that. Cause I want to know for myself a hundred percent cause empath and, you know, and we've done like some of the clearing things, crystal saging, all of it. Um, but I would love to hear this. How do we clear out this negative energy? I mean, if you believe or not, I just want to drop this note. Sometimes people like, like they call it like the woo, whatever, but physics, like when you rub your hands together, you feel heat, that's energy. So it's not really like that woo woo of a conversation. It's, it's science and it's, it is scientists, sci scientifically based. Um, so I just want to open up that for my non woo believers. Uh, but tell us, how do we kind of remove some of the negative vibes, negative energy? Well, um, so when I do a session for someone, um, you know, I, I do kind of like an interview in the sense of trying to figure out like what's bothering them or um, if they, uh, they, they're having a good day or a bad day. And also like if they have like maybe stomach issues or knee issues. So I try to spend some time doing, um, doing energy work through that. So just 
So the way that Reiki works is really hand placement, but you don't have to like put your hands on, on the body. You can do it. You can have the space away from the body. So, uh, so working through from head to toe. So spending uh, three to four minutes on each body part really helps to just see where the energy moves. And sometimes the energy will allow me to spend more time or less time, however, however I'm feeling. So if I'm heal feeling that I need to spend more time on the head area, that could mean something. That could mean maybe the person's having a headache or the person has maybe a migraine or something else. So then you just slowly move down the body and until you uh, finish off with the feet. So when you finish off with the feet, you kind of bless the feet and make sure that the person goes well on their journey. Um, and to clear away that energy path that you've taken on, just to clear yourself away, like do it three times. So kind of like a Literally, washing yeah. away, yeah, you know, washing away the of the um, of energy. And and sometimes I actually do physically wash my hands because you know you never know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> gotta look out for number one. <laughs> So you, you know, that's a really quick, quick uh, way of doing it. But I would recommend people to engage in energy work. Um, I know we are in a season of, um, you know, of changes and transformation. And I think that's a way of, uh, for people to tap into their potential and, you know, figuring out things for themselves, you know, whether it's Reiki, acupuncture, needling, um, uh, dry needling, uh, you know, whatever they believe in or massage, um, cupping. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of different varieties right now. Did you do Reiki first or CrossFit first? Um, I did, uh, CrossFit. Okay. Cause I mean, you know, CrossFit, we do cupping and acupuncture. I mean, it's like pretty relevant mm -hmm. in that community. Right. So that's amazing how like perfectly that fit together. The energy sometimes, although I think our young people are way more open to conversations around non-traditional Western medicine and energy and physics and that kind of stuff. Um, and they really get it. And I, I really encourage everyone, even if it, you don't think it appeals, you just go try it and see. And I think it's a game changer, but just the practice of leaning back into yourself, knowing answers are within, because at the end of the day, we're all seeking answers to something and we're all looking for something. So we look to others, but you know, all the cliches are true. Like the answers are within. So if you can learn that and build that skill of intuition and energy, I think it helps everything, including the fitness. Do you think the Reiki has um, directly helped you in your fitness or even service in your business? I think, you know, whenever I'm, again, feeling down or, or not, you know, not having a good day, I, you know, I do Reiki on myself and just, you know, just try to make sure that the energy, the energy is, is out. And so I clear away the energy for myself. Um, so I, I definitely think it's made me a, a, a better person. Um, yeah. And I also just recommend, again, you know, for people to explore uh, their different energies and to see, you know, these the tools that we have out there. Uh, and I think a acupuncture is sort of like Reiki, but they use needles to, you know, take out the, the bad energy. So it's more of manipulation, um, but it's a good manipulation of energy. Absolutely. There are options out there. There's really cool things happening. And right. what's also cool is you get to then meet new people that you kind of have something like an interest in, or you're seeking answers to, and you kind of have something in common. So I, I always think those things can lead you to some really cool community um, that you might not even have known you needed. And then there they are, and you have all this stuff in common and you might not have ever crossed paths with them outside of, you know, going in search of CrossFit or acupuncture or whatever. It's really cool. So I want to talk about this short film. Um, it's really cool. The bio here says a short film, Sarah's Journey 2021, co-created and written by Sarah. A story about resilience and never giving up on your dreams. It received several awards, semifinalist and nominee for the Berlin Short Shorts Festival, Tokyo International, Monthly Film Festival, Paris International Award. I mean, tell me what's going on here. This is really cool. Uh, so we um, we decided um, as a family to make this film uh, about, you know, my journey through CrossFit. And so my dad, you know, since he is a filmmaker and he's made many films about our family. And so this was just another film that we could make together. Um, so I would write the script and he would just, you know, film it. And together we decided that we would do it at the gym um, where my parents live. 
and uh, just work through kind of the workouts and um, and see, you know, see what we can capture together. Uh, so that's what we did. And we filmed a lot of different scenes. As you've seen the film, yeah. you can see just doing different workouts as a group, um, doing wall balls and, um, you know, trying to teach people how to do workouts throughout. Um, so already taking that coach perspective um, in the film. And then also we wanted to include, you know, the art, the art aspect and also because uh, that's important to our family and also to myself. So we wanted to include a lot of different pieces of, of our lives in the film and see what would happen. The original intention of this film was to submit it to the Nobel Film Festival, which is again, another film, uh, film fitness festival. Um, and so we had submitted it a couple times. We're trying to still trying to figure out if it's stay gonna... in it. Yeah, <laughs> stay in it. Let's go. Okay. But um, recently something I'm really proud of um, is an award that we won through Shriners actually. And that oh. that to me is is really just, um, it's just a nice way of saying, um, just a nice way of saying thank you. Yeah, uh, full circle. Like, full circle, exactly. Um, you know, as a Shriner, Shriners kid and and just, you know, having an award from them to, to really honor, honor our work, but honor their work as well, <laughs> because they've allowed me to, to do this really. And um, it's just a testament of, um, you know, never giving up. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are a walking resilient leader of any service or energy or um, time, space, education that's gone into you. You've served it tenfold and you still have a lot of life to go. So I'm curious to see what goes on next. But how can people support the film or get involved? Like, how can we support the cause? I'll, of course, post the YouTube link. But is there something they can do, like go online and vote or anything like that to help move this forward? Um, just keep liking the video on YouTube. Um, there, the, the link, um, is on YouTube. Uh, so you can watch it. You watch the film, uh, you know, sh share the story, uh, and, um, and like, like art, <laughs> yeah. um, go to a CrossFit gym, uh, get, get, get pumped, get, um, get some muscles, do what you can. I think that's how you can support, um, all of the causes and, um, and you know, tell a friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, before I let you go, I do want to say, cause you're extraordinarily humble. And I think that's such a beautiful, important and impactful quality in all leaders. So I applaud you on that. I see you giving out the credit and I hear you. And it's, I think that's huge, but I really do want to know, cause I don't think we all see, um, see our full selves and all the things we've accomplished, but what is like the biggest thing to date that you've accomplished? Maybe it wasn't athletically, maybe it was in the government, whatever, but you've accomplished to date where you look back and you're like, dang, I'm really proud of myself for doing this. Uh, I think it's CrossFit. I think okay. it's, uh, you know, being able to, um, get to the workouts, finish th finishing them in a way that I can finish them. Uh, and then cheering people on. Um, I, I really do love CrossFit. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, it changed my life. It, it's changed me for the better, physically, mentally, spiritually. And um, I'm really grateful for it. So I think um, just seeing myself through all of the phases of CrossFit and being able to complete all the workouts to do my very best. Um, and just motivate others to do what they can as well, I think is just another way of saying, um, you know, no one, no one cannot do this. There's really nothing you cannot do in CrossFit. And I truly believe in that. Boom. You are always welcome in any space of CrossFit there or you go. Space physically. <laughs> It, it's the truth. And if CrossFit doesn't make you a top brand ambassador, we're going to have to call someone because you bleed it and it's so real and it's so authentic. Uh, these are the humans that the CrossFit community needs or any community if they're so blessed to have someone so enthusiastic uh, about their cause and their mission because it's so positively impacted their world. Um you can't do any more right by them than what you just said. So they better embrace you and they better take on this film. So we'll, we're going to put together an army and figure this out. Uh, but I love it. I think it's so great. And I think that your mentality of always learning is huge. I think walking in the door, that first step is amazing. You reached out to me and sent me the video. So I think, I think just that is so huge. Cause I think people forget to believe in themselves enough to just take the initiative. People might say no, that you might not want to walk through the door. Once you do that, like you never know what's going to happen, but you still show up and you still, 
do it. Do you have like any good pieces of advice? I mean, you've dropped a hundred gems here, but um, for anyone that's kind of like on the cusp, like they don't really know if they can do it, they're lacking some self-belief. Is there some sort of mantra or anything that you have that you kind of stick back to when you're about to do something new? Uh, you know, I think it's, um, you know, if you're afraid, just do it, uh, but just do it. I think just completing the task, whatever it is, uh, is, is doing it and doing it even if you're afraid. Um, and I'm sure someone said that, but, um, I like it. I like, I think it's a great, um, just a great attitude to put it into your life and, and do great things. I could not agree more. We need attitude reflects leadership and we need phenomenal leaders in this country, in this world. Um, we could always have a better attitude. America might need a bit of an attitude adjustment at times because we got a lot to learn. Uh, but I think it's 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 really huge that um, you step in it. And on the flip side, if you're loving it and you're loving life and you're enthusiastic, you're blessed to do these phenomenal things, that energy just bleeds through. And I think the people that, the community that surrounds you is because of that energy, because of that authentic enthusiasm and everybody wins. I mean, you get so much out of the, you know, humans you're coaching um, and, you know, it, it's so reciprocal. It's really like a magical thing. Well, are you- thank you. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, are you currently coaching right now? Yes, I'm I'm still shadowing coaches, but I'm not officially coaching yet. But yes, I've been um, really grateful to meet, um, you know, different coaches to, to shed their time and just let me shadow them and, and see if I can lead their classes a little bit and, um, and do a little bit of a warm up or a cool down. So I'm taking different parts of the workout and, and kind of leading it, but also, you know, shadowing different coaches as well. I love it. Have people reached out to you and said, I started CrossFit because you inspired me or have you gotten any sort of that feedback yet? Mm, no. Okay. You will. <laughs> I mark my word. I'm, I'm putting it into the universe, but I already, I guarantee you there's more people watching you than, you know, and you've been more of an impact influencer inspirer well, than, you know, I, I promise you. And there, there will be people, um, that I think hear this. So it'll be like, Oh my God, when they watch your video, it's just so it's inspirational. And the things you've done have been incredible, but you're just your positive energy and your, uh, authentic enthusiasm for all your pursuits. Seriously. I'm not just saying this because we're camera to camera on the podcast right now, um, <laughs> is genuine and it's, and it's believable. And I do work with, you know, leaders and influencers all the time. That's not always the case. Uh, but I think you got something really powerful and it's your heart and it's your mission and um just this idea of continuing to improve i think that's what makes great leaders and you're already there so i'm excited to see where that goes and how it grows do we have big goals besides wadapalooza like within this next year or something coming up uh wadapalooza um and uh working on uh work volunteering at the crossfit games that could be something this year as well um we'll see we'll see where that turns out um but yeah i mean just working on projects to um you know better myself with art and poetry and um but yeah there's always projects there's there's never not anything to do there's always something to do i love it no sleep no rest for the wicked um I love it. Keep doing your thing. Put out the art, put out the energy, keep showing up at the gym. I can't wait to see where it goes. I better see you at Wadapalooza at some point. And if somebody that works for Noble is listening, listen up now, get this human's video in the mix. Let's go. I'll, I'll see what um, strings we might be able to pull on my end. I'm not super connected to CrossFit as much as I once was, but I, I think universe will do its, do its magic regardless. Yeah, I believe in that. So I, I, I know you will be right. Yes. There we go. I love it. Well, please keep in touch. Um, hit us with handles or websites or anything where you want people to know. Uh, so on Instagram, I'm Vogue poet. Um, that's pretty much it. I have a website, mm. but it's really long and I will never... post it. <laughs> yeah. I had to go back. I had to go yeah. back and look at, we find it, but her art's for sale. Um, yeah. I'll, we'll put up the YouTube link for, uh, yeah. the, the, video. the video. Yeah. The film. It's amazing things. Well, Sarah, I appreciate your time and energy. Let's please keep in touch. Um, and, so much, and if, absolutely. And if things come through or more words happen, I tell all my guests, let us know. We don't want like a one-time conversation. We want to be part of the journey and the community and, and extended support because I'm a, I'm a major believer in a uh, team effort and it really does take a village to accomplish things. So we are cheering for you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.
Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.